Hi, welcome to Loop Compensation and Simulation, Part 3. Uh, one of the EE vlog viewers, uh, I believe uh, Masurov, asked a question regarding whether you could use uh, two feet forward uh, path uh, uh, with the AC model. And, uh, and I'm going to try to explain that. Basically, his question was if you had your divider network okay, and let's say you have your output filter let's say you have it in a Pi configuration I believe this how the schematic look like he was saying that uh, what if you had two paths of feedback okay so you have one path through the sampling resistor and the schematic that he posted he had a resistor and a cap here okay and of course your error app is going to look something like this and so forth so basically what you have here this is known as a type 3 error app and typically this is used with voltage mode and the reason is that this type of configuration when you put the extra resistor and cap in there you can you have two poles and two zeros to play with it gives you a little bit more freedom and typically you use that with voltage mode if you're using a current mode PWM then you don't need this and typically you use the type 2 and type 2 only has one pole and one zero and the reason is because of the current uh, mode controller even if you let's say if you had a filter in your uh, inductor uh, and your output filter uh, typically that would give you a second order system but if you use current mode the inductor can be neglected and actually turns from a second order into just the first order okay so I'll try and explain that and hopefully I'll, I'll clear things up as I go through this okay, let's see. okay so there's current mode versus voltage mode and Jack's model can be used to simulate both the current mode and voltage mode PWM and they can be also be used to simulate flybacks and forward converters so to explain how we can use this type 3 I'm going to use a voltage mode forward converter as an example okay so this is your typical output filter for a voltage mode forward converter you'll have a inductor you'll have your capacitor output capacitor and of course you're going to have your ESR and since you have a LC here and the ESRs typically you want them as low as possible and when you make them low you actually have a high Q so you end up with a waveform that looks something like this peaking and then of course the ESR kicks in like that so you'll have a waveform that looks like that now because of that typically you want to cut that out you want to damp it so we use a C damp it's a capacitor and we also put a resistor in series with it and this resistor has to be a certain value in order to get rid of that low peak okay so to use Jack's model uh, instead of using a voltage control current source since it's a voltage mode the, the power supply basically the transformer the PWM the MOSFET and diodes they all they, they all act as a voltage control voltage source 
So you use basically the same schematic. All you do is just substitute that, the voltage control, voltage source, voltage control, voltage source, and just plug it in, and you're pretty much ready to simulate. Okay. So if you were to run a simulation of this, let's say just put a voltage source and put a AC signal and if you were to run and say plot the voltage out there you would get something similar to this you would get a Bode plot where it shows the resonant frequency due to L and CO and then you will notice that it has a steep uh, slope and it will be 40 dB per decade and then as you go out in frequency you'll see that it breaks with a st uh, with a less steep and this should be about negative 20 dB per decade okay so to calculate the resonant frequency it's pretty much straightforward uh, it's the square root no it's actually 1 divided by 2 pi the square root of L times C so that will give you that frequency right there and then to see where it breaks up where you have uh, the zero it's the same equation it's two, 1 divided by 2 pi the output filter times the ESR okay now let's talk a little bit about the type 2 or actually the type 3 error since the filter has two poles in this case I'm only using one capacitor I'm not using the the resistor in series like uh, uh, Mazurov had mentioned but uh, I'll discuss I'll cover that in a little bit but I just wanna all I do did is just set this cap in there so if you do that you'll end up with a type 3 and with this topology you end up with two zeros okay now the first zero is by this combination okay which is 1 divided by 2 pi the integrator resistor times the integrator cap so that's going to give you your first zero okay and then your pole is by this combination which is 1 divided by 2 pi the integrated resistor. I'm sorry. What was I thinking of? Let me make this red. That the uh, pole is a combination of this and that, which is 1 divided by 2 pi the integrated resistor times the roll off capacitor. Now, if we add this capacitor, well, that capacitor in combination with this resistor will give you this second zero, which is 1 divided by 2 pi R2 times C2. So here's your first zero, here's your second zero and you're going to have one pole. So let me correct this. Should be should be two zeros and one pole. Okay. So if you were to take a body plot of that, then you would have a you will see that you have a negative 20 dB okay and if you put both zeros at that location okay then you will have a 20 dB slope going upward and then if you put this pole at that frequency then it should break straight across it would be 0 dB 
So this will have this circuit, this type 2 with this one capacitor will have this type of uh, uh, phase response. However, this is not a true true type 3. A real type 3 actually has a resistor just like uh, Mazurov mentioned. And if you put that resistor and if you adjust this combination, in other words, C2, and let's name this R3, then that will give you another pole. And if you put both poles right there, you will have a negative 20 dB plot that looks like that. But in the example that I'm going to be using, I'll be using this configuration because uh, that's all I need and then the, the less parts you use, the better. Now, let's put everything together. Okay. So, we know that our output filter is going to look like this and because it has second order system you're gonna have a low ringing okay a low peaking and then it's gonna come down at a negative 40 DB and then when your ESR kicks in you have a negative DB okay and what you want to do is basically you want to put two poles two zeros I'm sorry you want to put this two zeros here at the same frequency that way it cancels or it matches that okay and then since you have this zero here what you want to do is you want to break actually this is a pole okay since you have a zero here you want to set the the, the pole of your error app to match that. So if you have this, if your error app has this type of waveform response, and if your output filter has this kind of response, if you match them up, then when you add both of them, your total loop should look similar to this. Basically, 0 plus your negative 20 will give you a total of negative 20 dB and then at this interval you have a negative 40 dB but then this your error amp has a, a positive 20 dB okay so when you sum it you end up with a negative 20 dB and then at this interval you have a negative 20 dB for your output filter but then you have zero so you end up with a zero. So basically what I want is I want a straight line right all up between the three intervals. Okay? So basically that's that's Jack's method of uh of uh compensating. So now here's a simulator and the only thing I did different is I added a cap and I added a uh, another capacitor which is 10 times bigger than your main filter okay and uh, I added a voltage control voltage source and I'm gonna go ahead and run a Bode plot of the system to see how it looks Okay, so I have that, and according to this, this should oscillate actually, because at 0 dB, or actually when your face is at 0, which is close to this, right there, 
you actually have gain. So this system, uh, this regular should uh, actually oscillate. So let's go ahead and fix that. Now you can use the simulator to uh, measure the frequency re the frequency response of, uh, of your circuits. Uh, I'll show you how to how to do that. Uh, we use that Venable resistor, and we use a AC source, and I defined it. Uh, the gain as this uh, voltage divided by this volt gives you the gain and then I plot the dB of the parameter or the variable that I name as gain so that's the body plot that we get here however you can move in this case it's the same node I'm just going to put it right here and then this in label, I'm going to move it to the input of the voltage control voltage source, and now it should give me the frequency response of the up filter. Okay, so here we go. Here's the body plot of the output filter and let me write this down it's got a frequency resonant frequency of 5.7 kilohertz okay so that's the frequency and the other thing that I'm interested if you notice right here look at the slope it has a steep slope and that should be about 40 dB negative 40 dB and if you notice right here at this point to this here it breaks up and this slope is negative 20 dB so actually there's a zero right here right there and I'm gonna go ahead and measure that I would say that the z zero is I'm gonna write down as 77 kilohertz so instead of calculating stuff you can go ahead and just use your uh, simulator to measure it uh, now I have this other variable which is which I call IN1 and I can set it right there and I have defined a second variable as error amp which is the gain from this node to actually this node actually from this node which is basically the output of that to this node so let me go ahead that way I can see the plot of both the output filter and the error app. So let me go ahead and set that up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, comment this out. And turn this back on. That should be the output filter. And then this should display the error app. Okay. And if everything's labeled correctly, I should get two plots. Yeah. So here we go. So let me go ahead and turn off the phase. Oh yes, I'm gonna put the phase. So I won't distract. Okay, so if you can tell, here's your ringing of the filter, and then this is the response of your uh, error amp. Now, one of the things that we always do, we if we have ringing, 
we always try to eliminate this or attenuate it as much as possible. So in this case, the rule of thumb is if your main capacitor is 150 microfarad, then what you want to do is you add 10 times bigger. So you put over 1,500 microhendries. No, I'm sorry, microfarads. And then what you do is you calculate the appropriate resistor that will damp it. In this case, you get the square root of L and you divide it by C. And in that case, I get a value of 183 uh, milliohms. So now that I have the capacitor and the resistor to damp the system, it should eliminate the, the peak. Okay, so now I've eliminated the peak. That looks real good. So now what I want to do is, uh, remember I want this portion to climb up because this is negative 40 dB. So what I want is, I want this to be 20 dB. And I want to make sure that this has two poles. No, two zeros. So, So the way to do that is we're going to set these two capacitors. This capacitor, I believe this is already set, but let me just make sure. So the time constant of the resonant frequency was 5.75 kilohertz. So what I'll do is 1 divided by 6.228 divided by, no, times 5.7 kilohertz gives me a time constant of 27 microseconds. I'll divide that by 5k which is the integrator resistor and I should get 5.5 nano. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and set this resistor to 1 and I mentioned that to set the second zero, I would have to set this to the same frequency. So again, the time constant is 27 microseconds divided by this resistor, which is the 19K, and I get 1.42. 1.42. It was already close to that. Okay. So, I run it. Uh, so now you notice it's got it upward. It's got a little positive slope. And it's lined up. So, there's two poles here. And there's two zeros. So they're canceling each other. And then I want to make sure that the high frequency roll off, which is about 70 is also uh, is adjusted at the right frequency and I believe I already have that because let me see it was 1 divided by 6.28 and I believe the frequency of that 0 was 77 kilohertz that's a time constant of 2 microseconds and I divide it by 5k that's 413 so I had it pretty close 413 ok I run it and it looks pretty much lined up ok so now I can take a look at the total response and see how they looks. So I'll go ahead and comment these out. And turn this back on. Let's see what the loop response is. Wow, okay, that's much, much better. As you can tell, the procedure that Jack uh, 
taught me works. So now I have a frequency, crossover frequency of 17 kilohertz with a phase margin of 75.2. So again, just a quick recap. Uh, yes, you can have a two path uh, feedback, but typically you use a two path feedback if you're going to use a uh, voltage mode uh, controller and specifically with a um, forward converter and actually you can also use it with the flyback because the inductance in, uh, uh, of the flyback would also have some effect on, uh, on the operation if you're using voltage mode so so uh, for a general statement if you're using voltage mode you can use uh, a voltage control voltage source to model both a voltage mode flyback and forward I hope this helps and I'll have some more videos with other uh, power supply modeling techniques uh, thank you for listening